Right, somebody posted a really good comment, a really good question uh, about a crispin tree, a tree of variety crispin, which produces a lot of flowers but doesn't set very much fruit and what could be wrong it's not a variety I grow I looked it up in one of my books uh, the best book Michael Clark uh, a field guide to apples and it's a triploid now this tree is a triploid it's to do with the chromosomes and uh, a lot of the best trees are triploids this is Ribston Pippin Bramley is another triploid Sunset is another triploid no not Sunset Suntan is a triploid all very good apples but they're difficult to pollinate uh, what we've done, we planted, when we planted these Ribston Pippins, we knew they were hard to pollinate. We planted um, James Grieve on one side of them, when we planted Egremont Russet on the other side. Both very good trees in their own right, but both excellent pollinators. So what do you do if you've got a tree like Crispin or Ribston Pippin, it's not fruiting well for you. Uh, if you've got space, plant two other trees nearby it, which give good pollen and which flower at the same time. But what if you haven't got the space to do that? You can, there's a, as a technique, you can graft in some wood from a suitable pollinator. Okay, now I just want to show you how I'm going to do this. This is a good example. Um, now you want to choose a, a branch reasonably close in. You don't want to choose something that's right out on the very edge of the tree. So think about where this branch will be. And this is a quite a nice one because this, if you just look up, Julia, you can see that this is a little bit of a thicket here, a little bit overcrowded. So we probably do with this coming out anyway. Um, very important point, uh, imagine that this is a piece of scion wood which I cut in late February and stored cool and moist and imagine that it is now the first week of April which is usually when I do my grafting, actually it's, a, it's the third week of February, I'm just doing this to show the technique, okay. Now here we go, uh, my lovely open on number six, very sharp, little pen knife, always care not to cut yourself. Uh, cut that into a nice wedge, just the right shape. Cut this into a wedge, cut a wedge here that will fit it. Um, note where I lock my thumbs together, uh, so that way I've greatly reduced the chance of cutting myself. You really need to do this to practice a lot before you actually attempt to um, do the grafting. You need to waste a lot of uh, wood you know, practicing to get the cut right. If I haven't done that particularly well, so I'll just do it again. Um, that one just didn't quite work out. I've been out of practice here. Uh, takes a little while to get the technique dead right. Uh, so practice, 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 practice. You know, it took you a long time to learn to type your shoelaces, but you got there in the end, didn't you? Okay, so can you see the shape of that? sort of a male to female thing, if you know what I mean, without being rude. Uh, and um, right, so that is, uh, this, is a, this is a saddle graft. I like the saddle graft, it's easy, it works. Um, but you don't have, you don't have to, you, to do that. Um, there are about three or four different grafts. Actually, I think life's easier, I'm going to use like a short piece of tope. There's about three or four different um, grafts I use. Uh, the saddle graft, the cleft graft and the rind graft. And as I've explained elsewhere, uh, it's mainly to do with the diameter of the wood that you're working to. If you've got wood that's about, you know, six millimetres diameter to six millimetres diameter, then, um, you know, the saddle is perfect. If you've got a thicker piece, the, uh, then the other types are more suitable. But the, the technique is the same. Okay, so you see what I've done there. Uh, this is purely a demonstration. I'm not going to leave that one, and that won't survive because I've, this almost certainly won't survive because I've uh, done that grafting too much too early. But I'll just uh, show you where we are, and I'll just walk back. You can see I've grafted that in reasonably close to the center of the tree so that that's going to have a chance to grow away and make a piece of uh, more or less permanent sort of uh, a branch system which will have fruit buds on it uh, which will give you some blossom but will, let's say for the sake of argument this tree is a crispin and let's say for the sake of argument this is a sunset I've grafted in which would be a very suitable um, a variety to graft in because sunset is a very very good pollinator and it's extremely annual it always makes a lot of blossom very good pollinator so that's a trick you can use 
That's a way of grafting, an alternative different way you use grafting to build a tree in the first place. You can use grafting, as I've shown, to work one variety over to another variety. Or you can use grafting if you have an infertile tree and you need a pollinator. You haven't got room to plant another whole tree, so you can just graft a bit in. And once that is mature and starts to produce blossom, you'll have solved your um, fertility problem.